Hi everybody. So today I'm talking about the other end of the line. I'm uh, Bhagwat Kumati, Director of uh, Product Engineering from Value Momentum. And uh, today, start off uh, looking at uh, the computer revolution. And if you look at 18th century, it starts off with like bunch of bunch of wooden cards and the Babbage created a calculator and that punch card system was created in the end. Right? And in the 19th century, if you go decade by decade, at 1930s, had universal machine by Alan Turing, and OBC was the first digital computer design. In the 40s, saw Z3 and transistors, in the 50s, Cobalt, Fortran, and then the computer chip was created in Kilby. In the 60s, you had, uh, you got the accessories for computer, like mouse and UI, in, in the C programming language was created, circuits. Around 1970s, spreadsheets, this is uh, interesting if you all want to know, that uh, WordStar was created. And the normal people remember WordStar before Word came up. Very powerful. We had after WordStar, WordPerfect. Around in 1980s, right, I mean, we had the operating systems created by Apple and, and Microsoft, like Lisa and Windows. 1990s, I think we're all familiar with Macintosh, HTML, like supercomputer, like Touchstone, Delta uh, supercomputer, and you had the Pentium processor, which was created by Intel. And Google came out with search engine, search engine, so by, created by Sergey and Larry. And around uh, 2000 to 2020, you will see Mac OS X, and AMD created the uh, Atal um, 64. The social media caught up, right? and you saw with Facebook having 1 billion users. And you have 2016, which was a year where quantum computing was first created. Coincidentally, I'm the founder of the first uh, quantum computing startup in India. And, uh, so today, uh, the, let's start looking at the quantum computing, right? how, how it evolved. You look at the classical computing, the history and quantum uh, equivalence will be there. But um, it's very interesting how it was, you see the evolution or the history right, of uh, quantum computing. So uh, this particular uh, picture I, is coincidentally from my book, Quantum Computing Solutions. And uh, it, it talks about solving real world problems using quantum computing algorithms. You see the history in 1965, you had quantum electrodynamics, quantum physical <clears throat> uh, processes around 1980. Then you had Dosh algorithm which uh, had concepts like universal quantum computer. And you had Peter Schur's algorithm, which was primarily focusing on prime number factorization. And trapped ion concept, which was found first in Western California. And they had quantum uh, teleportation in Grover's algorithm for uh, search in 1996. And the, if you look at the future, right, how it's going to evolve, and we start with a quote, right? The number of bits in a 300 qubit quantum computer will be more than known atoms in the universe, according to Dr. Mandar Pandey. So if you see what happened around 2016, we had IBM uh, having uh, doing starting with five five qubits from 2016, and uh, 53 qubits in 2019, and now you see Google tried 72 and again came back to 53 qubits, and now 20 times. Right, more like thousand qubits IBM is going to try in 2023. So just imagine if right, 300 qubits can simulate more than known atoms in the universe. We have thousand qubits in 2020, which is pretty much what you call simulate multiple universes. So, so how how did this change moving from qubit to qubit? Right, you have multiple qubits. We had started with secret sharing, quantum coprocessor. Then 53, we thought quantum supremacy was achieved. Then 150 qubits, you saw quantum chemistry and machine learning algorithms can be used. Right? We are going to see that it's going to happen. And in terms of the classical computer, I think everybody is familiar, right? We, heard, uh, we have bits. Bits has uh, one of the two states, like zero or one. Right? We have quantum qubit, which can be zero, one, or any quantum superposition between zero and one. Right? And, uh, you have different gates which are Hadamard gates and C0 gates and X gate. And you can have uh, quantum simulators, algorithms, and solvers, a cryptographic algorithm using the 
the what you call quantum bit systems to solve the problems. So, if we look at uh, the evolution, now moving on to quantum computation, right? And um, so, before that, I just wanted to emphasize on the Moore's law and the Rolls-Royce law. Everybody knows about the Moore's law. The Rolls law states that computational power of quantum computer doubles every 12 months. Now, quantum computation, right? And uh, you see quantum parallelism, quantum Hilbert space, and quantum entanglement, right? You can see the famous quote, quote from David Dodge quantum computers have the potential to solve the problem that we take a classical computer longer than the age of the universe. Right? Just imagine age of the universe where uh, it took for a classical computer to solve all the problems. Quantum computers can solve them real time. Now the quantum cognition, right, in the, in the quantum like brain. In the brain, everybody knows that uh, biologically we have a neural network and it consists of complex network of neurons. Now, if you take the equivalent in the quantum brain, how the qubit uh, has managed states like one, zero, and superposition, similar to that, you see brain acting or being in state of one, zero, or in superposition. So that's where the superposition of mental states right, can be simulated by using complex network, networks of neurons. So one of the community which is evolving is the quantum cognition community, which is simulating pretty much the neural network, which is, which is a biological network, and creating a quantum-like brain. On the hardware front, right, you have quantum chips. So there's another school of thought saying that uh, the quantum computing, and you have a super, uh, you have a quantum computer which is perfect than supercomputer. But there is, there is another uh, school of thought which thinks that quantum chips become really popular. Like you have IoT sensors, right? Quantum chips will be in almost everywhere, like nanoparticles, material discovery, used for chemical design, used for drug design, pattern recognition, right? It can be used for space tech, genetic science, and universe discovery, and biometrics, and IoT devices can have quantum chips embedded, right? So who knows, right? This can catch up really faster compared to the classical versus quantum computing, and number of qubits, and the whole another school of thought, right? Now, if you look at uh, typical bottlenecks in the industry, right, taking a step back, what are the key problems in computing? Now, you switch back to the classical computing problems. There are computing problems which are very complex, and you have uh, qubit technology which can solve this problem. So you have n qubits, you can model a uh, two to the power of n variables. So how do the how do the solutions work? Well, typically, you look at target market, you have marketing, what do you call uh, uh, personal to market a particular solution for customers and you see the solution benefits. Now let's see how quantum machine learning and quantum computing can solve. Right? So the target market or the class of problems which you're looking at is like machine learning, optimization, simulations, and cryptography. Right? Machine learning techniques are like clustering, scenario analysis, or optimization, logistics, planning, performance, traffic. Right? And cryptography is like cybersecurity and Post quantum resistance. Now, these are the class of the problems. Let's look at the target market or verticals. Right? We have automotive sector, including car global position system, manufacturing uh, sector, looking optimizing the factory workflow, energy sector, we have predictive maintenance optimization, and finance, like you, know, you have portfolio optimization, but it will simulate the whole portfolio right? like for wealth management, and you can simulate for around 10 years. And portfolio can consist of mutual funds, stocks, options, commodities, and so on. On the aeronautics side of the, so the aerospace, you have like aircraft design, some of the problems, challenging problems can be solved using quantum computing. Now, what are the benefits using this? Faster factoring, faster search, faster simulation. It can save by creating better schedules, to plan properly, you can bring down the infrastructure, it can have significant boost to the current techniques. Now let's look at how quantum AI is being applied. If you have uh, quantum AI, you have quantum methods, quantum cryptography, you have quantum languages, quantum VM, and latest is quantum internet and quantum network and quantum, I think everybody is familiar with quantum computer. You have quantum circuits and quantum virtual machine and a quantum processing unit. 
Now let's see how quantum AI is being applied. What are the use cases? We have resource management, we have scheduling, we have optimization. You can use some of these algorithms to solve this problem. So predicting, right? You were generating predict, predict, and analytic. Predict to analyze, you can use the quantum AI algorithms. So what are the quantum AI algorithms which we can use? We can use uh, quantum approximate optimization algorithms, vari variation quantum eigensolvers, quantum solvers, classifiers, quantum neural networks, and quantum generative adversarial networks. Moving on to quantum warps, right? I think everybody are familiar with classical kind of warps. Right? You have a particle which can move from left or right, and then the, the probability of half 0.5, like 50 percent, similar to a coin flip. Equally, equal to in the classic random walk, you have a quantum walk, which is a quantum analog to a random walk. Right? And you can substantially reduce the time consumption. You can simulate using Monte Carlo methods and mix Markov chains. You can apply quantum algorithms in wealth management and trading. Now, quantum perceptron, right, in, in process of two to four of n dimensions, whereas if you look at a classical perceptron, can process only n dimensions of data. This is about the quantum perceptron, which is very similar to the neural network which we're talking about the neuron. Here, the perceptron connects to various neurons, and it almost creates a sub neural network. And the other key area are the post-quantum risk algorithms like quantum SVM, Shor's algorithm, Gauss algorithm, various new cryptographic systems right, which are evolving, like um, Merkle hash tree signatures, Neckman CA encryption, Merkle Hellman knapsack encryption, ECDSA and HEV NTRU. Right? And I think everybody are familiar, is familiar with the Shor's algorithm. Uh, this is going to be a popular, right? Uh, we do have to reevaluate and see different cryptographic algorithms, blockchain security. Everywhere where uh, we are using the cryptographic algorithms, we need to reassess how will they perform when the quantum computers come in. Because it's, we're going to have uh, uh, almost like a high computing power, and that should be in the hands of not just us, but also the hackers. And if you could look at the hackers, they may not very really wait and what you call watch for the best quantum computer to come, but they're going to quickly apply the whatever, whatever is the speed available and then hack, right? So that's the other side of the screen which we keep in mind. Keep in mind, we are only looking at scientists and computational experts who are developing algorithms, but we need to keep in mind the attackers who are not really worried about the science and the philosophy behind the quantum computer. They may just pick a yet another computer which is faster, which is efficient, which can break break the uh, cryptographic algorithms. So that's where we, uh, the immediate focus needs to be to prepare and then avoid some of the cyber security attacks. We ensure that the post quantum resistance is being uh, achieved. Right? We all need to look at uh, the cryptographic algorithm and see where things can break when you have really high quantum computing speeds. Right? And um, if you look at the quantum cryptography, right, you have quantum key distribution. Right? And you have uh, nowadays uh, quantum key distribution as a service. So there are many, many areas which are uh, evolving in the quantum, uh, quantum cryptography side. So there are many, many hours, right? But when you talk about great things about classical computing, and quantum computing, and quantum chips, quantum hardware, but like what's next? What is going to happen after all this? So. The answer is, and there's a lot which, which we can see, right? Like, like they say, right, there's a lot to yet to come. We have generative quantum machine learning, an hybrid quantum algorithm, which can use a quantum burst machine. And we have quantum RAM, right? Quantum random access, access memory, and a deep restricted burst machine. Like you have deep learning algorithms like CNN and ANN, you can have quantum CNN, quantum ANN, using deep learning techniques and simulating the what you call and the new CNN and ANN using both machines. So if you all remember the both machine, it goes back to the quantum mechanics and it uses uh, quantum techniques. Right? It has algorithms, it has techniques which can be applied to solve some of the challenges which the classical deep learning is looking at. And QRAM, I think you're all familiar with RAM. You know, QRAM will be more powerful because it access, it 
has power, it has memory, and which can access incoherent quantum superposition. Like we talked about one zero handling multiple states. 